What's up, guys? Dave from BSC Bushcraft. I just made a, a new Bushcraft axe for myself, and this is my second restored axe that I did. I, what I did is I managed to find a 19 and a half inch handle at, I think it was Home Hardware, and I'd been looking around forever for something of that size. Uh, with my previous restored axe, I had cut off the handle and done a whole bunch of weird stuff to it to make it more of a pack axe because I could only find a 26 inch handle. So I was incredibly happy that I managed to find something that's roughly 20 inches because I think that's about the right size for a bushcraft axe. So what I did is I had a hatchet head. You know, I think this might be a pound or maybe even like three quarters of a pound. And, uh, you know, it's a hatchet head, but I basically, you know, put the handle on it and restored the axe and put my own wrap around it and did all that stuff. And now I have a new bushcraft axe uh, at my disposal. And you could kind of see what I was going for that this is about the same size as a Grand Sports Brooks. Uh, what is it? Grand Sports Brooks. Well, no, small force axe. There you go. You know, it's around 20 inches long, maybe weighs between a pound, pound and a half, something like that size. It's basically just a hatchet that has a longer handle. So you can two wield it, put two hands on it, wield it like that, one hand on it like that, no problem. Very comfortable, very light. This is less than half of the weight of my other axe that I have been using for my bushcraft stuff. So even though we're losing light here, I thought that maybe I'd show it out a bit and maybe we'd go fell a dead standing tree somewhere around here. The light might not be the best because it's getting dusk, but I want to play with this thing a little bit. So just up here, there's a few alder trees that people have ringed, which basically means that they cut the cambium layer all the way around the tree to kill it. And they'll probably use it as firewood because alder is decent firewood where I live. We don't have too many hardwoods <coughs> that naturally grow. So I'm going to try to find a, one of those trees that have been ringed and fell it because I don't want to cut down a live tree. <laughs> you can see that this place here, people 4x4 four four and light fires, shoot shotguns, throw beer cans everywhere. It's not a nice location to have a soul overnight or anything like that. It's a little bit too close to civilization, so people dump garbage and all that stuff here, which is sad, but <clears throat> it's fun to play around with in this area, for sure. You can see that they cut all the way around the tree with a chainsaw, and that means this tree will is either dead or it's going to die. I think this will be the one that we'll take down. It's going to die anyways. And it's just about the right size for this axe too. So I'm going to try to go about halfway through. That's pretty good. Definitely halfway through. Now we'll do the back cut. I like this axe, this is perfect. Now I'm just gonna cut in half just so I can deal with it and take it off the road. I have to be careful not to put the axe into the ground because of the rocks.
Fold over. Let's do a little ones. So I don't put my axe into the rock. Good. Oh, I've totally lost my light, but that's just a quick little preview of my new, but old, <laughs> restored bushcraft axe. I think it's going to fit perfectly in between all of my other axes that I have. It's light, but it can still pack a punch. And still take down trees if I wanted to. It's like having a hatchet just with a longer handle so I think it, it fits in perfectly with solo overnights and a lot of what bushcraft is nowadays so I hope you enjoyed this video. Be prepared to see this on some more of my journeys and stuff like that. So I uh, hope you guys have a good day and I'll see you on the next one.